Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. Because I'm a complete glutton for punishment, I'm sitting in here with a very ill-fitting post-war M1 helmet answering the important questions of will it ping? Remember that sound, it's important. Now in the comments under an earlier video we did on the ping, there were all sorts of interesting comments where people insisted they did this, they did that. The Germans would stick their head up and shoot and get shot down. Okay, let's just pull all that aside. There's no documentary evidence for any of this that's surfaced yet. If there is, please send it to me. I want to know. I want to know. I will give it full publicity if there's a first-hand account from the era, not something remembered 70 years ago. Um, I'm going to get lots of hate under this, say, ask a veteran, you're disrespecting our veterans. Or, okay, fine. But what Newton told us was that for every veteran, there's an equal and opposite veteran. And the veterans I'm really interested in are those on the other side, Germans and Japanese. Now, even on Wikipedia, when it deals with the ping, it cites secondary sources from after the fact. In fact, one of them is this book, Ordnance Went Up Front by Roy Dunlap, written in 1948, after the fact and Dunlop mentioned somewhere he wasn't. Secondary sources. What I'd really, really like to see, and if anyone's got them, please, please post them on the Facebook page. I would love to find a first-hand account from the era, from a German or a Japanese soldier. I would love to find a, um, uh, an after-action report, a medal citation, uh, a lessons learned document, anything that, that mentions that the ping was either a problem an objective problem, or was used to the Americans' advantage any, any more than throwing rocks or sticks or whatever vaguely in the direction of the Germans to make people make them think that people were coming around another way. Um, I'd love to see some evidence. Please, if you've got some, please post it in the comments below, on the Facebook page, anywhere. Because frankly, if Wikipedia can only cite secondary sources, I'm not convinced there are any primary sources. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I know some of you believe this very, very strongly. Now, everything I'm going to try out today is mentioned in at least one comment with absolute belief that, they, that, that, uh, that the soldiers did it and the Germans will go, aha, and pop up and shoot or whatever. Um, anyway, let's start with a few particularly silly ones. First up, a tin mug. Does it ping? In no way, shape or form. Next thing we have to think about is, even if it were to ping, what has to happen? Well, we have to have a bang and a ping. Just like with the clip coming out, the rifle makes a ping. If that clip falls on a hard surface, it makes a second ping. In fact, the two pretty much run together normally because it'll go bing through the air and then clatter. So what are we doing? Well, let's, let's say this worked. So we've got to go, oh wait, I've got to hold it in my hand. So right, hang on. So I've got my tin mug, which I've just had to get out of my pouch. And remember, in the, in the, uh, the US tin mugs were in a water bottle pouch under a water bottle. So I've had to get faff around in my pouch, water bottle out, uh, water, uh, water bottle. And I'm supposedly in contact with the enemy within hearing, within ping hearing range. So I put the water bottle back in, and then I'm going to have to get my rifle again, hold the thing, and then go bang! Don't think so. Next one that's improbable. Uh, there's a lot of confusion between magazine and clip here. This is a clip. It goes in the magazine. The magazine is fixed. That's part of the rifle. They tapped the magazine, which a lot of people think. Okay, they tapped a full clip of ammo on their helmet. Don't think so. What I think this is coming from is um, Vietnam era. Uh, film of people tapping an M16 magazine against their helmet, or you see it in films against the helmet, but I doubt anyone in contact with the, with the enemy is going to be doing that. But uh, anyway, it's quite common to tap a magazine to make sure that the rounds are all back. And in fact, in an M1 clip, if the rounds aren't back, the clip doesn't necessarily function properly. But here I've just put one long. <laughs> doesn't really work. And if I'm going to do it the other way, I'm going to dent the table. The only way to be absolutely sure that you've got them all back here is to check them. 
one by one. The points are really hard. You do it against your hand, you know about it. Uh, anyway, a bit of background on why I think that one's come about. Uh, the, another one, they tapped it on their helmet. Lots of this, like 20, 30 instances of this. They tapped it on their helmet. Okay, so I'm holding it, I'm going to tap it on the helmet. Rings a little. Now, did a lot of experimentation with this, and if I hold it really daintily so it can ring, I can kind of get a sort of little, almost, but I'm going to hold it in very dainty fashion. And remember, again, that we have to be making a bang first, otherwise it's not convincing. And if we're going to rely on the bang of somebody else, then I'm not alone. And no Axis soldier is going to be dumb enough to stick their head up if I'm not alone. How often were soldiers alone? Maybe lonely in a, in a foxhole late at night somewhere. But, um, yeah, so anyway, so we're going to shoot, no, I've got to hold it. I'm going to hold it. Okay, let's hold it. I'm going to go bang, and then I'm going to really, oh, I've dropped it. No, try again. Bang, really daintily hold it, and then, no. Not going to convince anybody. Now we're getting into the realms of the not quite so silly, but again, the mechanics of it don't make sense. Right, they threw it at their helmets. Yeah, that pings. But again, what am I going to do? I'm going to hold it in my hand. I'm going to shoot it around in the direction of the enemy and then throw it at my helmet. So I'm going to distract myself. I'm going to get it out of a pocket or pick it up off the floor. I'm then going to hold it in my hand, distract myself with it, and then go, bang! Really? Now another variation of this is that they threw it against the receiver of their rifle. Yep, makes the noise. However, again, the mechanics of it. So I'm going to have to make a bang, and all of the time when I'm faffing with this clip, I'm not in a position to fire my rifle effectively because I'm faffing with the clip. I've got it in my hand. Would you, in contact with the enemy, be faffing with things in your hand that you didn't need to be. Personally, my hand would be on my rifle, and if it wasn't on my rifle, it would be because I'm reloading and trying to get more rounds into the rifle. It wouldn't be to faff around with some silly post-war myth. There's frequent comments of uh, the stress of battle heightens your senses and your pupils widen and uh, fight or flight response and all of that. Yeah, fine, but if you've ever fired a full power rifle without hearing protection, one shot makes your ears ring. Particularly in, if you're indoors. If you're out in the open, yeah, it's not quite so bad, but in principle, you've been firing your weapon, other people have been firing their weapons around you. All that's going to do if you have heightened hearing is heighten the in your ears. Okay, imagine the loudest rock concert you've been to. Right? That is, the, 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 the ringing in the ears after that is nothing compared to the ringing in your ears from uh, being around lots of uh, rifles firing. Now another one that's particularly silly is um, they used to strap them or tie them to their helmets. Now I can't say I've ever seen an archive photo of an American soldier with an M1 clip tangled in or strapped in to their helmet net or otherwise attached to their helmet. If you've got one, please post it. I want to see it. I really want to see it. Please, please, please do. Do. I'm not joking. Do it. Post it. Now, okay. I haven't got a helmet net here and I can't be bothered to faff around with the string. So I've just taped one end of it. Does it ping? I hit it with something else. A little. It's not great. But the more important thing is here, whose NCO is going to be happy with someone wandering around with something in their helmet that's, all, that's, that's making unnecessary noise all the time? Seriously? I mean... Really? You're creeping around, you trip, you stumble, and... So, that, how are you going to creep up on anyone? Like that, that, this one's particularly silly. Now, I thought we'd just finish up with a reading from a 
Ordnance went up front, page 294. Since this is Wikipedia's best, in inverted commas, source on uh, the ping. Here we are. Infantry fighting is not always correctly pictured, and a lot of people have very little understanding of some phases. Often it was almost man-to-man -man scale of, on a life-and-death basis game of hide-and-seek. In jungle warfare, visibility usually was limited and sound played an important part. Japs on Guadalcanal learned that the ping of an ejecting M1 clip meant a momentarily empty rifle and American infantrymen died because of it. Aberdeen was in a slight furor for a while, trying to silence the noise, make plastic clips, etc. Well, he wasn't on Guadalcanal. He was in North Africa at the time. Later he was in the Philippines. Apparently the Japs and the Japanese in the Philippines did not uh, work this same thing out. Now, the last sentence is also uh, very interesting. Aberdeen was in a slight furor for a while, trying to silence the noise, make plastic clips, etc. Now, as far as I'm aware, all of the Aberdeen Proving Ground test reports are public. Certainly from that era. They're all public. I've not seen this. And uh, Wikipedia says Aberdeen Proving Ground tried to silence it. And it cites this book as the source. He wasn't at Aberdeen at the time. Um, so even this book, this is just hearsay. Now to reiterate, if anyone has access in a book, in a pamphlet, anything, a manual, uh, a good primary source to this being a real issue either way, uh, please, I want to know about it. Here at Bloke on the Range we're big about increasing the total sum of human knowledge and correcting incorrect gen. So if you've got it, please post it. Um, Tone down the hatred of disrespecting veterans, whatever. As I said, for every veteran, there's an equal and opposite veteran. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider liking and subscribing, and uh, consider coming on to our Facebook page where we discuss all sorts of stupid things like this. Bye! Oh, those silly Amis, they are not going to be convincing anyone with that ping noise. And I am not going to be convincing many of you with this Swiss helmet either.